We look back at New Labour yeah. as the ones who uh, opened the floodgates, in other right. words, to, to immigration from everywhere in the world, not least from the European Union. But the Conservatives... Under Conservative Watch, hundreds of thousands every year. Uh, well, there's nothing wishy washy about half a million people. It's a huge number. And for those people who voted Brexit in order to bring down the borders and to stop this kind of immigration, they're going to be pretty disappointed by that. Mm. Now, there's an irony in it. One simple thing as population grows, normally that helps an economy grow too. We seem to have been the worst of both worlds here in a recession and with a growing population. Now, why is that? Because we often talk about how immigration is good for the economy, yet we've seen stagnant productivity and also stagnant wages. So can it truly be said that huge numbers in terms of migration mm. is a good? Well, well it, it probably would be even worse if they weren't coming in here, to be honest with you. We've got an ageing well, population. Well, we can't know that. Counterfactual. Well, well from, a scientific, from, not scientific, from an economic point of view, I think we can say something about it. We have an ageing population, and that means we need to backfill the retirees with somebody. And my opinion, I studied economics mm. at, up to university level, and, and my feeling is probably we'd be in an even worse position without those people. But then the, the downside here is it puts so much more pressure on our infrastructure, mm. primarily on housing, because you have to to house 70 million people now instead of 66 million and 50 million not that yes, many we'll decades be, ago. We'll be getting into housing, um, of course, because that's a massive area of contention when it comes to our government, whether we should be having top-down mm. targets on housing in order to keep up with demand or whether people should be able to say, no, we don't want more housing in our area. Thank you very much. James, what are your thoughts? It is an astonishing number. I think a lot of people who are quite relaxed about immigration in general have been taken aback by this massive number. Well, you've got to look beyond the numbers uh, and you've got to look at them in detail. If you read the Office for National Statistics, uh, as I have done, 89,000 Ukrainians came in on the special scheme. Yep. And a further 90,000 through conventional visa routes. That's an enormous number. The student numbers are enormous mm. as well. Now, the, in terms of the boats, it's about getting on for 40,000. And that's so, not even included in that figure. Uh, well, it's certainly in the ONS press release. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, so it's relatively modest, but still sizable. A lot of them are illegal. They shouldn't be here. They sh uh, should not occupy our hotels. But I think you put your finger on it uh, when you said, you know, we've had declining and low productivity. More migration is not going to improve our productivity. That's to do with mechanization, to do with delayering the bureaucracy in the National Health Service. Mm. I even found myself agreeing with Rishi Sunak recently an unlikely prospect, uh, uh, when he, he talked about robots in healthcare, you know, for older people uh, and so on. The other thing is, we've got to be very careful. You know, of course, these kinds of numbers, although a lot of them are paying students, and in my experience, few foreign students bring a whole lot of dependents. It's relatively small, that. Yeah. But uh, what we have to think about is, is it the immigration problem that uh, which should be controlled, which is responsible for our infrastructure collapse? Or is it 12 years of conservative neglect, Labour um, passing when it had the opportunity to deliver nuclear power before, and the general hostility of the green elite to house building, to building on the green belt and everything?